Cannon is the founder of Walks of Life Art, an initiative to raise funding and awareness for nature conservation through paintings derived from the wild. This spring, he returned to Arizona from a year working and training as a safari guide in South Africa. Here today to talk about his debut body of work, the Bushveld series, please welcome Cannon Winkler. Do you all hear that sound? Do you know what this is? Well, chances are, if you go back far enough, your ancestors may have known this animal and may have understood what it's telling us now. The call comes from a bird known as the greater honey guide. And what's special about this call is that he's not talking to any other animal. He's talking specifically to us. And he's telling us where we might find some honey. Now, honey guides evolved alongside human beings in southern Africa and have a mutualistic relationship with us, meaning that we both benefit from interacting with each other. And if you decide to answer this call and follow the honey guide, the bird will lead you from tree to tree through the bush until you find an active beehive, where traditionally, you both will share in the bounty of the hive. Today, many people feel that us humans have become civilized and that we no longer have a place in nature. But the honey guide teaches us that we are still recognized by the wild and it will still speak to you and call you in if you only know how to listen. So I'm the artist behind Walks of Life, which is an initiative to raise awareness and funding for wildlife conservation through artwork. And since the conception of the initiative, I've managed to raise over $15,000 for a nonprofit called African Parks. And over the course of the next two painting series, I hope to donate up to $150,000 to help rehabilitate and protect nature preserves throughout Africa. As for the artwork, Mm. I essentially create large abstract paintings, drawing inspiration from ancient human artworks like Bushman rock art, Aboriginal dream paintings, and Eastern mandalas. However, what's different about these paintings and what you won't see in any other artwork is that they're made entirely from wildlife tracks that I collected from real animals in the wild. If you look closer, you begin to see a lion paw here, elephant tracks next to white rhino, a giraffe hoof. Each of these paintings attempts to convey something that is completely wild and at the same time universally human. I hope to use my artwork to help people reconnect with our last remaining wild places because I believe a direct sense of connection is essential if we're going to prioritize protecting these places in the future. Now, all of these paintings come from my debut body of work, the Bushveld series, which is a collection of 12 paintings where all of the wildlife tracks come from a region known as the Bushveld. This is a woodland savanna habitat that runs from South Africa through Botswana and Zimbabwe. It is the home of elephants, lion, leopard, Hyena, hippopotamus, 147 species of mammal, over 500 different kinds of birds, and well over 2,000 species of plants. It is also one of the last strongholds of the critically endangered black rhinoceros. And it was my home. For over a year, as I completed my training as a safari guide and collected animal tracks for this painting series. Although new, my methods are quite simple. When I find a track that I like, I inject it with silicone, cover it up, and return to collect it once it's cured many hours later. The result is a flexible, anatomically accurate mold, which I use like a stamp in my paintings to bring a little piece of wilderness into each one. Now, for most people, when they think of wilderness, they tend to think of some version of survival of the fittest. Every living thing in competition with one another for resources, food, reproduction. And there's certainly truth to this, However, in my experience, nature is just as much about cooperation as it is competition, but it's not always as obvious. Though I'll give you an example. On safari, we sometimes talk about how elephants can help create habitats for crocodiles. Imagine this. It's rainy season in the bushveld. Water thunders down from the sky, and the ground becomes soaked and muddy. An elephant walks by and presses 13,000 pounds of weight into the earth and leaves behind a footprint like this. The next time it rains, this track will fill up with water and become an ideal place for warthogs to take a mud bath. Each time a warthog bathes in this area, it carries away some of the mud on its skin, making the hole larger. 
and after many uses, it becomes large enough for a buffalo to wallow in, and then a rhinoceros. And eventually, elephants themselves will come to bathe here, each of these species making the hole bigger and bigger each time it's used. Over time, it becomes a new habitat, one that supports a greater diversity of life. Crocodiles, fish, terrapins, a plethora of invertebrates, plant life, and a new source of water for the land animals. Though it takes many individuals and time to accomplish these changes, it all starts with one step, or shall we say, one footprint. And I don't think it will come to a surprise to any of you that many of us are losing our sense of connection to nature. Though we still depend on the actions of thousands of species, directly and indirectly, every single day, we do no longer feel we are a part of a natural system. But I believe, like the elephant creating new habitats in its footsteps, we can find a better way. One where our actions no longer harm the biodiversity of this planet, but reinforce it. Where we feel that we are connected to the natural world, and so protecting it no longer becomes optional, but rather integral to our thinking. And so my hope for you all is this. I hope the next time you feel nature calling to you, that you remember the song of the honey guide. Remember that nature still recognizes you as one of its own. Remember that you too are something wild. And I hope that you decide to answer the call. Thank you. Thank you so much.